the old farts back in the shop. <laughs> uh, a small project really, but done in very small chunks because it's been so damn hot. Uh, in my last, not my last video, that was my ride around, which wasn't perhaps for everybody. Um, this flexible shaft motor and grinding head, if you remember seeing it. Anyway, I sort of brought things forward, deciding that although the Dremel tool post mount worked fairly well, uh, even though I tightened the Dremel bearing, it's still not as good as I would like yet anyway. But this does seem to have a pretty good bearing. Uh, so the object of the exercise, which will become clear, was to make something to hold that and a means of attaching that to the tool post. Alright, uh, you'll see how it works out. Basically it worked out. A few tweaks yet to do, but Anyway, <laughs> let's crack on and put the bits together. Well, since I got recently, which I showed you in the last video, this uh, flexible sh shaft grinder, I sort of brought this forward as a project just to make something to mount this in the tool post. Now this is a weird diameter. I thought initially it was 26 mil, but it's actually a bit under that. And it's actually only about, I think, eighth, ninth hour over an inch. So, for convenience, I haven't got any thick wall tube for steel, but I have got this piece here, which is, uh, I don't know whether I even checked the wall thickness, I just looked at it and thought, yeah, that'll do. It's a um, quarter wall, and I think it'll be rigid enough. So what we're going to do here is, this is inch bore, and I've only got to relieve it by just a few thou. So I'll have to be very careful taking a light pass. First of all I've got to true up this end, face that off, which I think was hacksawed. <laughs> it is far from square. And then, for convenience, I mean, I'm always saying this, aren't I, every time, what have I got? Well, I got this piece of 5 eighths by inch and a half. Oh dear, I keep forgetting. Sorry, inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter by... Yeah, 5 8 And that will do nicely for the uh, tool holder. Uh, pretty, pretty thick, solid stuff. Needs cleaned up a bit. I'll probably machine one side at least to get a good surface. And then on this, once I've got it bored out, um, it only needs to be about four inch. No, not four inch. No, that will be four inch because it'll contain most of this. But the uh, bar, that'll probably be made a bit shorter. Three inch would be enough, but I think we'll use most of it. Anyway, when we finished here, we'll take this to the mill, we'll grind a... grind, <laughs> I should be so lucky, I'll mill a flat for uh, attaching this bar and we'll drill through counter bore and there'll be enough meat left on that quarter inch to get a decent uh, thread and then at 90 degrees I'll drill for probably, I don't know, two, maybe three set screws. The idea is not to clamp down too hard on this. I don't think it's terribly thick walled. We just need enough to secure it. So that's the plan at the moment. I 
I've taken a few cuts, so I've got a little bit to go. The OD seems to be turning pretty true, but um, I'm not so sure about the bore, it looks a bit weird. I'll have to see how that works out. It doesn't look very true, does it? Mind you, I think there's no chamfer on here. I think that's having an effect on the optics. I'll put a chamfer on the outside there later on. I think the next thing is try and set up a boring bar. Well, I took one pass already. I don't think my tool is quite quite ideal, but I checked that. I only need about another three thou, although I don't I can do with a little bit of free space. It's a four inch plunge, so I'm not gonna keep rolling for the whole thing, it'll take too long. I'll just check that and see where we are. Well, it's pretty much uh, about a thou oversize. just tightens up a little bit there. Put some scratches on that. <laughs> and I think, yeah, that's actually going in further than it needs. So it's tightening up at the end slightly. So I think I'll just run some paper down inside. A little bit ridged, just polish that slightly. Just that little bit of internal polish. Just a probably a thou to spare. That's okay. I think I'll polish this uh, bit of tube up before we go to the mill. I'm going to pop this off at uh, 4 inch. I just made a start and hadn't lo <laughs> locked the uh, tool holder. Silly boy. feed rate was a little bit slow there, I should have added a bit more, but anyway we got through. I'll just face that and uh, put a little chamfer on. Let's take a small cut to clean that up, it's not bad from the parting tool, but take a small cut. And then chamfer, probably with a far. That'll work. 
I think it's uh, mill time next. I'm going to skim this uh, 5 8 bar. I'm still going to cut it down, but I just want to get a decent surface on the one side that's going to meet with the uh, tube. In fact, I don't need it this wide, uh, so I should have to cut that longitudinally. I only want enough to go in the tool holder, so I'll have to think about that. Well, I needed to cut down the bar. That's the... Uh, scrap piece. Not too bad. Probably could have run the saw a bit faster. So this piece now we've got to mill that side, clean it up. So somewhat vindicated my little bit of work to make the mount. Quite pleased with it. I still got to make a new uh, platform though. Got to clean up this uh, saw cut face. Uh, probably to take about, uh, I think about 25 thou. Deburr that piece and uh, probably polish it, clean it up a little bit. Well, I've taken the uh, piece of bar out actually for now to save tooling changes. I'm just going to get my flat on the piece of tube. Twenty-five thou, and I've already got to go another. I didn't work it out the math. It'll take about another twenty, so I'll take another cut or two till I get the width. And I think what I'm going to do once I've got a chuck in here will put two fixing holes. Sorry, two tapped holes in for fixing to the bar, but using the DRO to set up the spacing. That means then when we put the holes in here, which I've got to shorten down a bit, uh, we'll use the same spacing, and that should make sure that we're nice and parallel. I took another couple of passes. Uh, went up to uh, 65 thou and uh, we're now about close to exact and I think that'll leave me enough meat for threading to hold it. So the next thing will be clear up the mess and a little bit of deburring and then we'll mark this up get centred and two holes, I think two inches apart, should do me in pretty well. 
Okay, well, I've found centre here, edge finder. Uh, I've come to the middle, set zero, and now I'm coming one inch this side of centre and one inch that side. So these are going to be the tapped holes. Um, so I'm going to get that, uh, I'll get those spotted and get a tap drill through. I'll come back to you in a minute. Right, I've got the uh, tapping holes in there. Just using it at WD today. Do the other one. Might help if I go the normal direction of rotation. Okay, um, and I'll take this out and deburr it, and then I'm going to flip it 90 degrees and put in some set screws on that side. So there's a bit more drilling, a bit more tapping to come. All right, we're rotated 90. I've got a flat on the vice jaw there, so that's very handy. Um, set up on centre, so I'm going to do three uh, set screws, may not need them all. Centre and then an inch out from there. I won't bother you with all of them. Right, let's do the other two, and then I'll come back and just give a tiny touch of uh, quarter, and then we'll tap. I don't know whether I mentioned I'm using quarter twenties everywhere. I'm um, just doing my usual touch with a quarter instead of chamfer. Um, it's the merest touch, and I set the depth stop. See if it's enough. I think that's all I need. I'm not trying to lose any thread, but uh, I might just reset the depth stop and give it a few thou more. Anyway, get the quarter in those, then we'll tap. I'm just using some WD on this. I've cleaned the bore of the tube up, but I put it back in because I forgot. Uh, I need a clearance for the uh, chuck key. I'll show you that later when we put it together. So this might be the last cut.
but not quite. Just do a little bit more. Got to allow for the uh, radius. which I'd forgotten about. Few thermal more. It's not much, probably another 50. A tiny bit left. There's another two or three cuts, of course. That's a quarter inch, but that isn't. <laughs> it's, that's probably uh, getting close to three eighths. So I just kept cutting, and we've got to deburr that and clean it up. Now I think the tube is finished. And all I did mention earlier, it's stinking damn hot. <laughs> Not so long ago it was frozen nuts, but now it's uh, sweaty brow. So I'm doing this in small stages. Well, it's still stinking hot. <laughs> anyway, to uh, catch up, um, I'm zeroed. Uh, the piece of bar was slightly longer than needed so what I did was uh, having got two sides milled uh, I milled one end uh, took a piece off on the bandsaw milled the other end so I brought it down to the length of the uh, piece of tube so I now just want two counterboard holes in there and uh, then we should be good to go, hopefully. Well, I've already spotted, and uh, because of the countersink, counterbore, I should say, which I use, which has now vanished into its e-slot, <laughs> uh, you've seen it, but you've seen it before. It's a real real short little fella but uh, to make it accurate I've got to make the uh, pilot the right size so that's what I'm doing first which is a bit tedious Sorry, that was a bit slow. Right, we'll clean that bit up and then do the counterbore. This counterbore is so uh, short and stubby, it's, you won't see much, I don't suppose. Too much 
chip build up here. Let me carry on with this one and I'll pick you up on the last one, second one. I did find another counter ball. It's an old one, but that uh, that shorty, I think it needs to regrind on the bottom end. It just was not cutting properly. Depth stop in use again. It's well worth making that. Oh, it's a little generous, but that's okay. Alright, I've just got one more stage just to finish putting the clearance hole through, and then I think I'm done. Let's just get the uh, clearance holes through. I think that should be about it. I've got a little bit of deburring, a little bit of chamfer, and then uh, see if the pieces will fit together. <laughs> Acid test. All right, well, there we are so far. Um, that's the cutout for access for the chuck key. Um, these bolts went in nice and we've got three set screws there's a little bit of tidying up to do and uh, <laughs> I've had enough in the sweatshop literally so I'll try and finish this off tomorrow then uh, see if we can set it up on the lathe see if it's going to be any good maybe a waste of time never know right we're pretty much done that's all it is. I'm hoping the aluminum will be robust enough. I think it will. Uh, these cap screws have been trimmed very accurately inside there. So I've got maximum thread bite and uh, clearance. So if we take the flexible head And then the uh, set screws will only be done up fairly, fairly light, just enough to hold. And let me come in a little bit closer there. So, yes, you can see it. That's the relief. I ought to get a higher angle shot, really, but... I'll just snug these up lightly at the moment. Probably don't need three but it seems like a good idea. So that's in position. I've got to see about setting up uh, centre. If I use the foot pedal I've got the motor hung up. Actually if I rotate this you can see a bit better. Anyway, what I've got to do is to get this on machine centre. So I'll do that and then pop a wheel in. Just checking for <coughs> focus there a minute. All right. Yeah, I've set up. I haven't got a tiny centre, I've used a small. Um,
Centre drill. <laughs> Small centre drill. God, can't get the names out. So that's on very close to centre. And uh, I'll pop something in here just to check it out in a minute. Well, this isn't an ideal stone. I'm not sure quite what grit it is. Got nice oily nails today. Um, I think I want a finer one, and this needs dressed. I also had to turn down the shaft, not only for fit, in fact, but uh, concentricity, and this is still running a little bit out. But for demo purposes, I think it's adequate just to give you the general idea. It's sort of doing the job, but it needs a finer stone. Plus, this isn't this hasn't been dressed, it's still running slightly eccentric. But in principle, I think we can make that work. So I should probably get a smaller stone, shorter, finer grit, and it may be a case also of running the lathe significantly faster. But there's potential there anyway, so <laughs> despite the sweat and delays I've got there in the end and I think that'll do the trick when I get uh, done with tweaking it. At least the holder's working well anyway. Well, there it is, it's done. And um, I think you'll have seen it closer in the uh, various clips. Anyway, as a mount goes, uh, it's worked out pretty good, but uh, some little odds and ends I need to sort out with regards to a grinding wheel. And I've looked around, but as yet I haven't found um, grinding wheels that I really like. I've got some basic aluminum oxide ones, they don't run very true, they have to be... Uh, the one I showed in the video, I had to true up the shaft for about an inch uh, and even then it doesn't run quite true it needs to be dressed and actually the chuck maybe I misread the chuck size I thought it was going to take quarter inch turns out it's more like three sixteenths but I can get round that maybe find some three sixteenths uh, decent stones but a lot of the stuff that's available cheapo stuff and maybe even some of the Dremel it's on an eighth harbour um, not really man enough for what I want but in essence the whole thing works that's the main thing small project bit fiddly like so many small ones are uh, so that's it and my usual statement no idea what's next maybe some cooler weather eventually <laughs> which might help and then I can spend longer out here and we'll see what happens anyway we're back to making chips, so thanks for watching. We'll see you soon, I hope. Bye.